Database sharding is the process of splitting up records that would normally be held in the same table or collection and distributing them across multiple machines, which are also known as shards. Sharding is especially useful in cases where you're working with large amounts of data, as it allows you to scale your base horizontally by adding more machines to serve more users. And in this complete tutorial, you'll learn how to deploy a sharded MongoDB cluster with free shards in 5 simple steps. First, you'll learn how to set up the MongoDB servers. Next, we will set up the MongoDB configuration server. In the first step, we'll configure the shard server replica sets. And after that, we'll be able to launch the Mongo's query router and add shards to the cluster. And in the final step, we'll also partition collection data and we will check how our data is distributed. And along the way, you'll learn how to choose the sharding key and verify that documents are being split across multiple shards. Let's start by understanding the MongoDB's sharding architecture. In a standalone MongoDB setup, you directly connect to a single server, but with a sharded cluster, data is split across multiple nodes, so some of the collections can be sharded across multiple shards, and some of the collections might be stored only in one of these shards. So if you connect to only one of these shards, you will only see part of the collection data. And if you modify data directly on that one shard, it could lead to inconsistencies across multiple clusters. So to avoid such issues, MongoDB's sharded cluster consists of three components. The first part is these sharded servers. Next, we also have configuration servers, which store the metadata and settings for the cluster. And this is what ensures proper setup and management of the shards. And just like the shard servers, it must be a replica set to maintain high availability. And next, we also have a query router that directs application queries to the right shard. So all the client and API requests go through this query router and this also makes the cluster's complexity invisible to the external applications. And since sharding happens at the collection level in MongoDB, a database can have both sharded and also unsharded collections. And one of these shards is always considered to be as the primary shard and all of the unsharded collections will live entirely in this primary shard while the partitioned collections will live across all of these shards. And this query router will help us to ensure consistent access to all of the data across this cluster. So now that we understand the architecture of MongoDB sharding, we can get started with the first step, which is to set up the MongoDB servers. You can do this on any virtual server like AWS EC2 or DigitalOcean servers. First, we need to create five droplets. Three will be for the shards. One will be the configuration server and one will be the query router, which is called Mongo's. So the first one is for this query router, the next one is the configuration server, in our case we will have just one configuration server, and then we will also have these three shards where we will partition our data. We need to install MongoDB on all of these servers initially, and since MongoDB signs its software with GBG key, we need to import this key for the MongoDB version which we want to install. Next, we create new sources file for MongoDB, which will be located in this directory. And then we need to update the server's local package index so it knows where to find the mongodb-org package. And after this step, we are ready to install MongoDB with this command. And then we are ready to run MongoDB on all of these servers. So we'll start it on all of these servers with this command. And then we can also check the services status. And you should see that this is active on all of these servers. So with that, we installed and also ran the MongoDB on all of these servers. Next, we need to set up the MongoDB configuration server, which is this server in our diagram. So we will configure this as a replica set, which will enable it to function as the configuration server for our sharded cluster. We need to edit the MongoDB configuration on this. And for that, in this configuration server, we need to open the configuration file of MongoDB. And once the file is open, you can find the replication and sharding fields here, which are commented at the beginning. We need to uncomment the replication line and add the replica set name and we'll set it to config. And we will also uncomment the sharding line and specify the cluster role as config server. So this setup will tell MongoDB that this instance is part of the sharded cluster and it will serve as a config server. We need to save our changes in this file and then restart the MongoDB server. With that, we enabled the replication for the server. However, MongoDB instance isn't yet replicating any data and you'll need to start replication through the MongoDB shell. 
So we'll go back inside of this configuration server and we will run Mongo which will get us inside of the MongoDB shell. Here we can use rs initiate. This command will start the replication with the default configuration inferred by the MongoDB server. So if the setup is successful, you'll see the following output. This OK one indicates that the status is successful and it will use the default configuration for this set because we haven't provided the configuration for it. And after that your MongoDB shell prompt will change to indicate the replica set status. The first part of this prompt will be the name of the replica set you configured previously. If you just hit enter here, you will get into the set's primary member. And in this primary set, we can run the RS status to verify that the replica set was configured properly. So the key details that we will look here is the set, which should be set to config, and also the config server should be true, which indicates that this is a config server now, and also OK should be 1, which confirms that everything is running smoothly. And with that we have set up the config server of the MongoDB in this sharded cluster. The first step is to configure the shard replica sets. Now that the config server is set up, it's time to convert the shard1, shard2 and shard3 into instances of replica sets so that they will act as shards in our sharded cluster. So we need to log in into all of these shards and first we need to modify the MongoDB configuration file. Just like how we did it for the configuration server, there will be replication and sharding fields which will be commented out. So we will uncomment the replication line and we will set the REPL set name to shard1 for the first shard and shard2 for the second shard and shard3 for the third shard. And for all of them we will set the sharding cluster role to be shard server. After updating and saving this configuration file we can restart the MongoDB service on each of these servers. Next again we need to open the MongoDB shell by running the mongo command and then we will run rs initiate in each of these shards. And we should get the same output and it should tell that it's using the default configuration for this set. And once we get into the primary member, we can run RS status which will indicate the status of this shard. So the set should be shard1 for the first shard and shard2 for the second shard and so on. And the OK status should be 1. And with that shard1, shard2 and shard3 are now configured as single node replica sets and now we are ready to launch the query router mongos and add shards to the cluster. So in this step we need to connect them into a sharded cluster and this is done by this query router which manages the communication between the config server and also the shards. So first we need to connect this to the configuration server and since this mongo router won't act as a database server we can stop the mongodb service with this command and to make sure that mongodb doesn't start automatically we will also disable it with this command. Now we can run the mongos process and connect it to the configuration server. Here this first part is the config server name which is config in our case and then this part is the IP address of the configuration server and this is the default port where MongoDB service will be running and this will make the connection with the configuration server from this Mongo router and that is this connection here. Now we also need to add these shards to the Mongo router and we need to connect them together. For that we need to enter the MongoDB shell for this query router with the Mongo command. And now to add the first shard to the cluster, we need to run add shard method. And here the shard1 is the replica set name, which is shard1 in our case. And then we also pass the IP address of this first shard. And we need to do the same for the second shard and also for the third shard. And after that we can run sh status again to verify that all of the three shards are now connected to the cluster. So you should see all of the cluster names here and also the host which should be the replica name and then the IP address of the particular shard. So with that we configured the Mongo query router with the config server and also with the individual shards. Now in the final step let's partition some collection data. To start interacting with the collections and documents in our database, we can use the query router, but without additional setup, any new data that you insert will go directly to the primary shard of this database. And in this case, you won't be benefiting from the sharding. So to fully leverage your sharded MongoDB cluster, you need to enable sharding for a database. 
To illustrate this partitioning behavior, let's use an example of collection of documents that represent the world's most popular cities. So you'll store documents in the populations database inside of the city's collection. And each of these documents will look something like this with the name of the city, country that the city is part of, continent, and also the population. And once sharding is enabled for this database, you can start partitioning the city's collection. And MongoDB offers two main ways to shard collections. These are range-based sharding and hash-based sharding. For this example, we'll use hash sharding, where MongoDB maintains an automated hashed index on a chosen shard key to distribute the documents evenly. And here, choosing the right shard key is very important, as if you choose it poorly, it can diminish the benefits of the sharding. And the good shard key should have many unique values, it should avoid a high frequency of duplicate values, and it should be commonly used in query filters. In our example, the country field is a good shard key because it has high cardinality and is often used in queries. First, we will enable sharding on populations database with this command. And then we will shard the city's collection and we will set the shard key to be the country field. And now that sharding is configured, we can insert sample documents with this query router. So let's insert a bunch of cities into this cities collection and MongoDB will automatically distribute those documents across these shards. And now we can check how our data is distributed. The output of this command will provide statistics about the distribution of data across your shards. And this will show you how evenly the documents are spread based on the hashed partitioning strategy. As you can see, in our case, we sharded this based on the country, and we have relatively even distribution across our free shards here. And with that, we have now successfully set up a sharded MongoDB cluster, enabled the partitioning for a collection, and inserted data that has been evenly distributed across multiple shards. And by choosing the right shard key and using hash sharding, you have optimized your cluster for efficient data distribution. And if you're interested in learning more about how database replication and sharding work together to improve scalability, be sure to check out this video next.